In this tutorial, we're going to look at designing MIDI controllable instruments with your own samples. This is a good way to develop a distinct voice and musical language as you'll be using instruments that are uniquely yours. By experimenting with different sounds, you'll also develop a sense of what types of sounds you like to work with and what isn't really your style. I'll be using Ableton, but you can also do this in Logic using their ESX24 sampler. Sweet, so to get started, I have two tracks. I have an audio track where we can record sounds for our sampler and a MIDI track where we'll build the actual sampler instrument, but we'll worry about that in a little bit. So we'll get started on the audio track. It's armed. Uh, we'll turn on input monitoring in a second. So I'm just going to record sounds of some stuff I have around me. Uh, and I'm using the computer's built-in microphone, so there's nothing fancy going on here. Um, this might give us a little bit of kind of a lo-fi, gritty sound, but I think that these sampler instruments uh, get the most character when you're not necessarily too careful, right? We don't necessarily need like a super pristine sound, but that's your own taste. Um, so... A couple things to keep in mind as you're recording, keep an eye on the level meter. You don't want to hit the red, you don't want it to get too loud. And if there are sounds that you like, make a couple different variations on them so that you can uh, have options to play with and also so that you can do some layering and panning with slight differences between the two layers. So we'll turn on monitoring, track is armed, and we'll go ahead. Let's leave it at that. Cool. Um, some pretty good ones in there, I think. I liked that second bottle. It had an interesting wobble on it. Yeah, I like that. So notice that we have some pitched sounds, but we mostly have percussive sounds. So uh, let's get into the sampler. So we'll just see how all of these work. Analog. Uh, our, our MIDI track I, defaults for me to the analog synth with just a plain sine wave on it, which will be useful in this case for tuning the samples or the pitched samples. So I'm going to leave that there for now, and I will turn this single instrument into an instrument rack. So that's Command G. And what that means is that when we click this icon here, we have a little list that pops up so that we can have a bunch of instruments all on the same track. So we'll leave analog there, but I'm going to turn it off for a second. Then I'm going to open up the left-hand menu, go to Instruments, and I'm looking for Simpler. There's a couple of sampler instruments in Ableton, but Simpler is really easy to use. So now, uh, right here, drop sample here, we're just going to drag our whole audio file in, and we'll do the editing right in this window. So in this window, you can see our audio file, and this little line here determines where the sample starts when you hit a key on your uh, computer keyboard or MIDI keyboard. So we will just zoom in by clicking and dragging down and making sure that the sample starts right at the beginning of that sound. Let's try it out. So now every time I hit the key, we hear the, we hear the sound. So I'm going to turn it up. Cool. So that works pretty well. Um, if we only want that first sound, we're going to drag the end point right before the next event happens. That way we'll only get a single, uh, we won't get sort of uh, delayed other sounds happening. Pretty cool. So now what we can do is using that analog that we, that we muted before, we can use the analog to tune our uh, water bottle bell sound. So I'm going to turn the bell sound up further, and I'm going to turn the analog down a little bit. And the bell sound is higher than the analog sound. So the idea is that when we hit a key, we want to make sure that the right note is playing. So go over to, in the simpler, go over to controls, and right here it'll say transpose, and we'll just play with that until the two sounds are in tune.
And then this right here where it says detune, we can do some finer control. Cool, that worked pretty well. So let's see some other things we can do here. Um, over on the sample page, we have an envelope that we can play with. So if we turn the sustain down and adjust the decay time, we can have that sort of noise sound fade out. So that smooths out a little bit the sudden ending of the sound. Very cool. Let's also go now over to the controls tab and we have some different things we can play with. Over here on the left we have a filter. So we can soften the sound up a little bit. Ooh, that's kind of nice. We have an LFO, so we could put on some vibrato. If you want, uh, I don't want that. I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, you can also do like tremolo and some different kind of effects there. That's pretty cool. Um, we also have a, uh, what is this? Oh, we could do a pitch envelope if we click right here. So what this is, well, let's just play with it. But if, if you want the pitch envelope to do anything, you have to turn the amount up or down. So that adjusts the pitch every time you hit a key. So something that's really useful here, this works really well for percussive sounds, like kind of noisy sounds, not as much pitch sounds. But if you put a pitch envelope on it, but then make it very short, It can just add a little punchiness to the attack of the sound. Try that with like a kick drum or something. Maybe we'll do it later. I'm going to leave it. I kind of like that. So right now, what we have going on with this is we have the bell sound. I'll isolate it. Adding a lot of character just to the attack of the sound. And the analog synth is taking care of the sustain. So I think that works pretty well, but let's keep going. So, I mean, from here, you could use this and it sounds pretty cool. You could have a lot of fun with it, but I wanna take this synth a lot further. So this track right here, I'm gonna rename by doing Command R, I'll call that Bell One. And now I'm gonna duplicate that track. So I will right click and hit duplicate and we have another sampler or simpler right beneath it. So let's solo this and then pick one of our other sounds. Um, yeah, let's do the other bell sound. This is an idea that I use pretty often. You take two of the same, uh, or two very similar variations of the same sound. Make them slightly different, but then pan them left and right. So let's just right off the bat, we'll pan the first one left, the second one right. We'll call this bell two. So if you're listening on headphones, you probably notice that this sound now has a lot of uh, a lot more space to it. We can adjust these parameters to create additional differences between the left and the right, sort of widen the image. I also want to turn up the release a little bit on both of these. So that if you hit a really staccato note, you still, you don't get that sudden cutoff. Okay, cool. So I like this sound a lot. Let's keep adding to this sound. So I'm going to, again, duplicate that simpler and let's see whatever the next sound we made was. So we're just gonna zoom in. I'm gonna isolate that sound. Also center it again. And also take that filter off. Cool.
I like this. Let's hear it in context again. Let's turn this one down. I kind of like that. Um, let's also, let's play with pitch shifting it. Maybe we can make this one super low. Cool, I sort of like that. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit further. And we'll call this mouths. We'll just call it mouth. Okay, let's do another one. We'll duplicate that, solo it. Let's see what the next sound we made was. Is that the same thing? Why did that? Oh, whatever, let's keep going. Uh, let's see what this is. Ooh, a noise sound. That could be useful. Let's, yeah, let's use it like a really sharp attack. And for this one, well, let's hear it in context. Kind of like that. Um, the filter over here, let's turn this to a high pass so we can really just isolate that kind of sparkly. We'll solo it for a second. And then without the filter, yeah, that's really all I want out of this sound. And let's also un turn off that transpose. So, that's kind of nice. All right, so we'll call this one TSSS. Um, that adds some nice high frequencies that we didn't have before, so I kind of like that. Let's duplicate it one more time, see what happened after that. Oh, another similar kind of sound. I think we can, well, you know what? Let's actually do the panning trick again. We'll just solo the two TSSS sounds. I'm gonna label them one and two. We'll pan left and right. And they're quite different, so I think I might even just see how it sounds a lot already. Cool, love it. Let's duplicate this again. Our next sound. Solo it. Oh, we got our snaps, that's gonna be nice. That'll add a really, really nice sharp attack. Excellent. And this one, I want to, I already know I want to pitch shift it down. I feel like it's getting lost. No, I, it's funny. It's one of those things where you kind of feel it, even though it's pretty subtle. I'll leave that. But I think this sound might be kind of full. So. Let's now go in where, if you look at this meter here, we're getting pretty close to maxing it out. So let's turn everything down to like negative six. Give ourselves a little more headroom. And then we'll have to adjust analog again to match. I think we're still clipping. Let's go even further. We'll do negative 12 for all these. And then I actually have one more thing I wanna do. I had an idea. That looks a little better to me. So, okay, my last idea is that I want to uh, record a, I wanna record my voice like humming and I want to replace analog with that. Because to me, the analog still feels kind of uh, cold compared to the rest of the sounds. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. We'll try those. Maybe they'll work. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go back and just put a, a clean simpler in there. I'll call this voice. I'll drag this sample in. I'll solo it.
I'm also going to solo the analog so I can get these to match. Actually, it kind of seems like it's already in tune. It's just an octave up. No, it was fine. So... I actually think I would like it an octave down. Nice, okay. And here's something I'm going to do. Because this is a sustained sound instead of a percussive, just transient sound, I'm gonna hit this button here where it says loop, which means that when I hold keys, when it reaches the end of the sample, it will loop the sample. And because this sound has a couple different parts to it, it you know we're noticing some a lot of variation as the sound is looped. Uh, because we're holding multiple keys down, it's slowing it down and speeding it up to do the pitch shifting. So we get this sort of like out of sync looping sound. So voice gonna duplicate it. Um, gonna pan one left. Let's just go all the way one right, and then we'll change the start and stop points of one of them. Uh, and maybe we can also add a little bit of the pitch LFO to both of them. We'll go to the other one, change the pitch LFO, and we'll just slightly modify the speed. So again, this is just going to make slight differences between the left and right so that we have a wide stereo image. Cool. So that is our uh, composite sampler instrument. You can see all these different layers we have. Um, you know, one thing I just want to reiterate here is that we have some pitched sounds. We have the water bottle. We have the voice. But we also have just a lot of noisy sounds in there, which add a lot of nice character to the transient. So I would recommend trying that out. If you are doing this in Ableton, use the techniques I just used. If you are doing this in Logic or a different DAW, um, find your sampler instrument. Like I mentioned at the beginning, Logic, it's EXS24, I think. Um, and I believe you can layer multiple samples in that plugin also. If you can't figure out the layering in a single track, don't forget that you can make multiple tracks, many, many tracks with variations on the instruments, pan them, mix them just like we're doing, and then just copy paste the same MIDI to every track. It won't be you know, quite as real time as being able to play it on the keyboard like we're doing, but um, it will allow you to get this nice, rich, composite sampler sound without needing to buy expensive samples and expensive synths. You can just use, you know, what you got. All right, try it out.